everybody. So, been watching Facebook, you've been watching my feed, you know I've been pretty busy. And, uh, so, one of my, uh, one of my older friends, uh, old co-worker, just made a comment and asked a question, uh, which is, I, I kind of get it a lot, uh, I deal with it a lot, but I don't ever get really asked. So I want to go in and, and talk about uh, the door conversion. So when you're going from a sliding patio door to a double French door, or if you're going from a double French door to a slider, uh, you know, or, and not in swing the out swing, because there's a lot of variables that you need to be cognitive of before you go down that throat. Not that it's hard, but nonetheless, it does. Uh, it there are some variables and some things that have to be done. So if you have a stock slider, um, there's either going to be some sheetrock or some kind of paneling or something that goes into that original stock sliding patio door, right? So whatever original door you have in there, there's going to be some kind of trim work or molding that goes up to that because that patio is attached with nail fence more than likely, which goes back behind the trim and things like that. So. Um, what you would do if you're going to have a double, if you're going to go to that same size and you're going to, and you want to put a French door in a spot, um, you want to take off that trim, uh, take that trim off, take all that sheetrock off, whatever. And there's some quarter round beads, um, around, there's a quarter round bead for the sheetrock. Take that off as well. You're going to cover back up with trim. So down on the floor, you want to make sure your threshold is cut back. Uh, if you have tile, if you have wood flooring, anything of that sort, you want to bring that back even with the wall sheetrock itself. As you bring that back with the wall sheetrock itself, now when you set that new French door in the hole, you have the rabbit opening from brick to, oh, I'm sorry, from two by four to two by four, you have that opening. You typically want anywhere from, depending on what door you have, uh, a 71 to 72 inches is typically what you have. There are some uh, some units that most units are are 70 and three quarter or 71 um, is usually what they are. There are such French doors that go out to 74 and a half unit size where both door slabs are 36s. Um, but nonetheless, that's usually what it is. So you cut that flooring back to even with the outside wall of that sheetrock, right? So that way that threshold when it sits down inside. You tell them from south, I use my hands right. So when you set that door inside that threshold, it, it makes a nice, flat, even surface. And then you take your inside door trim, and you trim the inside of it out. And on the outside, you either trim it out with one by four or a brick mold or whatever the case may be. But that's pretty much how it is. The distance, when you take that sheetrock off, you don't have to worry because you're going to cover all that up. And you need that space in order to open that door all the way around. Um, if you set it in the same hole that it is, if you don't take that sheetrock off and you put the, the exterior door in that hole, then that frame is bigger than the frame that the sliding patio door was. So now your trim's going to be off when you go to put the trim on and it's not going to be right at all. Um, that frame is designed to go from sheetrock to exterior trim um it's designed to do that it's four nine sixteenths is a standard jam size uh, big if it's farther then it's probably five and a quarter so um uh, that's pretty much it on that now if you're doing an out swing it's the same thing you still got to take that sheetrock off you do the threshold and do all that and you're doing the same thing the only difference is is the placement of your screws so, for an in-swing French door, you want to put your, your screws on the inside holes for the, for the hinges. So, there's going to be four, four screws on your, um, and they kind of stagger. You want to put your, your screws on the inside, closest to the inside of the jam, is where you want to put those screws. If you go on the outside, you're catching sheetrock. You're not going to hold that door up, okay? Fatal mistake of most GCs and most handyman and most, oh, I can do it. Man, I see it all the time. Guys that used to work for me or still work for me, they see it all the time. 
and they oh go on the inside okay because now you're actually catching two by four you're actually catching that two by to hold that unit up on an out swing don't do that because you're still catching you're catching that dead space between the outside trim and the house itself which is you know the brick freeze or you're catching that dead space and there's nothing there to actually grab a hold of so what i do i pull that sill back and i go inside back behind that door sill and the screws are going to be hidden that's kind of the only real variable for out swings that is, is a little bit different um just to ensure that you catch that two by uh you know front frame of that rabbit frame opening for the door that way that door doesn't sag uh, i hear it a lot that you know like well my mother-in-law i just left my mother-in-law's house and her door was was wasn't racked right same idea i checked those screws in that upper hinge and they had them on the outside screws um which was doing nothing but grabbing sheetrock um, I pulled those out, ran them on the inside of that hinge, sucked that door right over. I mean, it's, I don't know why contractor, I don't know why people do that. It drives me nuts. But, um, keeps me employed, right? So, um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, don't be afraid to cut that sheetrock away. Uh, because you need that opening to get that door in the hole. Uh, don't be afraid to cut the, the, the flooring, um, whether it's a tile, uh, whether it be tile or be you know, wood flooring, what carpet, whatever it is, cut it away. If it is carpet now, when you cut that carpet back, there will be a tack strip that runs all the way through. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can you can re-adhere that. Uh, you can either shoot down a new tack strip if you have it, or there's other techniques you can do uh, in order to keep that from coming back up. Uh, what I always do was, what I do is run a new tack strip down um, before I bought the gun. This was back a long time ago. Um, we run a new tack strip, lay the carpet on top of it, and then take a piece of quarter round of shoe molding and lay it flat hard, push hard down on top of it, and shoot that into the uh, threshold. And the carpet doesn't come up. So it's kind of a sandwiching and grabbing, you know, grabbing and everything all, all together. So... Uh, like I said, that's how I did it. Um, and then of course I use silicone and all that kind of stuff underneath as well. So when you, before you set your door, use silicone underneath the threshold. Um, don't use liquid nail. Liquid nail is an adhesive, which is great. Yeah, whatever. But it's not, not a water barrier. Silicone, there he is. He's tuned in. Silicone is a water barrier and an adhesive which you do not want water coming in underneath your door uh build a box go all the way down on one side all the way across and just build your box going all the way up against that two by and then fill the inside uh for a french door a sliding patio door i usually i use one a, a tube uh, of ge silicone like i said it's a water barrier uh and adhesive um to set that door by yourself because i'm um I used to set French doors by myself all the time. Uh, all you do when you when you get the new door, um, open it, uh, pop the hinge pins. Just take a hammer and chisel or a hammer and a screwdriver, pop those pins, right? Lay the door slab off by itself, and then take the uh, take the frame and just set the frame in the hole, screwing off, putting the screws in where I told you to put the screws. Oh, we got. Oh, good lord. Oh. Um, put the screws where I told you to put the screws on the inside of the hinge, right? On the two screws on the inside. And then uh, go get your doors, repin them, and, you know, put them in the hole and, and drop the hinge pins. And then shut the doors slowly. And the doors will, that will tell you what you need to do, how to dress it and re rack it, or, you know, one side needs to be pushed over more, or one side needs to be let it out some. That's how I tell. I don't use I don't use levels because the door is going to tell you what needs to do. How do I get the damn thing out of the hole? There's no visible screws. Okay, all right. So demoing, demoing the sliding patio door. Kurt, is it the um, 
It's, it's the original sliding patio door, right? So more than likely it is. Uh, especially if you're not seeing any screws, you're not going to. Uh, because there's um, they're held in by nail fins. So the so you have a flat piece, flat piece, and then there's a, like a T, almost like a T bar uh, for the nail fins that are actually held into. Um, okay, yeah, okay. So yeah, with it being the original, um, so I'm in a I'm in construction, so it's kind of ugh. Uh, okay, so there is nail fins there. So especially with it being the original, you're not going to find screws because there's not any because it's held in behind your trim. On the outside of your wall should be, it should be brick mold. Is it in brick or is it in uh, wood siding? If it's in brick, then you can, um, you, you literally pry it out. Um, if it's a, well, either way you pry it out, but <laughs> on your other trim, you can actually probably leave your outside one by four trim there if it's there. All right. So take your active do, uh, active slide out depending on what door it is there's there's technically there's like four versions of the old standard doors there's like four of them um, kind of like cement oh you you got stucco then yeah it sucks to be you all right so you take the active door out so you should be able to pull that door back raise that door pick the door up and slide the bottom out and that that door should come out is how it should happen if that doesn't happen then on the then you have to do the fixed panel one first yes yeah, stucco yeah okay so this gets into a little of that x factor of stucco which yeah it's gonna be fun so um but take your active door out all right, the, the, the door that slides all the time. Take it out. On the outside, there's going to be a screw down the very bottom and a screw at the very, very top. Okay, it's either going to be a Phillips or it's going to be a nut driver, a quarter inch nut driver. It's going to be one of the two. And then on the fixed panel side, right, over on, and I keep pointing to the side thinking it's a left hand slide, uh, right hand slide, but there should be a bracket holding that fixed panel in if, if, it's, if it's a certain brand. If that bracket's not there on the fixed side, then if there's a line on that fixed panel door, there might be a line going all the way up that fixed panel where the, the two sections meet. If there's a line there, then that cover is a cover is what it is. You pop that cover off, and then there's a screw there and a screw down at the bottom. They're both uh, quarter-inch nut drivers, and you pull those brackets off. Then you would be able to slide that fixed panel out. You have to get those panels out first. No, the screws aren't in the track. Well, yeah, for the fixed panel, there will be. The fixed panel will be down inside the track uh, on the ground, and then there will be another one at the very top. So you would unscrew, unscrew those two to free up that fixed panel. When you get that fixed panel out, right, when you get that fixed panel out, then you're able to demo the frame. Once you get both those fixed panel, I'm, uh, okay, no visible screws anywhere. Okay, so is there a line running up that fixed panel door? If there's a, if there's a line running up that fixed panel door, then that middle mullion bar is really what it is has to come off yeah send me pictures um but I, i'm i'd be willing to bet that's what it is so if you don't see any visible screws like i said guys there's three or four different versions of these and depending on which one you have depends on how you take it apart but there's a there's a line down the middle you separate that line off it's kind of a pain in the butt to do take that off and then and then once you get those sashes out of the way then you're able to uh, pry I usually go in the middle of uh, the middle of the unit hit it in the middle of the frame on the on the threshold and then literally just pull up and as you pull up that threshold the um, 
the sides should come in a little bit and then you're able to get back behind behind there and you just you pop it out and for and, and rip it out um i believe don't quote me but i believe i have a video um an old video of actually me taking you know, taking one out if you if there's not one there'll be some videos of us taking uh windows out and you literally do it the same way it is the exact, exact same way so check my video feeds uh kurt and you're i'm you're liable to find something in there you might have to dig you might have to go back a few years but uh but there very well might be something in there uh, other than that um quick synopsis on how to take out a sliding patio door to put in a french door uh it is easy to do uh, obviously if you know how to do it uh, make sure your 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 rabbit opening is right, your your opening is right, and uh, and then you'll be good to go. Uh, Kurt, send me those pictures. Uh, you can text them to me uh, to my office phone uh, two uh, two one zero five one seven nine zero three eight, or you can text it to my personal cell phone two eight one nine one four three two five nine. Both of them can get me. Uh, if you want to email them to me, that would that could even work too. Uh, Hotshot Construction Services at gmail.com. Uh, other than that, guys, y'all be good. I hope this helps. Like I said, if you have any good questions or anything like that, do like what Kurt did. Come in, leave a comment, and uh, ask me a question in the comment, and I'll go live and answer to the best of my ability with no pictures, no knowledge of what you have. So now I do know he has a stucco. I'd be willing to bet I know what door he has. Uh, which is an old atrium version that came out um, in the 80s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, they got popular again in the 90s, which, and like I said, they're eh, it's atrium. <laughs> Other than that, guys, y'all be good. Thanks, y'all. Have a good day.